All right, how much oil, Mom? So for a double, for a double recipe, which is what I'm making, it's two thirds cup vegetable oil. There's the recipe. Okay. And then in here, we've got the, we've got two cup, two cups and a quarter of flour, and I've added the um, so I'm doubling this, so it's a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Right? And normally you would sift it through a flour sifter, but I don't have one. Okay. So I'm just lightly doing that. Okay. Okay. Then I've also set aside some water that I've got ice in, because you need ice water, and you need... Oh, I thought this was a drink. No. <laughs> That's for later. Okay. Um, and I, um, let me get a spoon. So what you would normally do is you kind of like create a little crater in the middle. And you pour your oil in, let me get the fork. Some people use a pastry cutter, but I find a fork to be just fine. I'm not gonna pour all of the oil in. Okay. Because if you put too much, it's just, I'm gonna wait and see how the dough looks after it integrates. This is canola oil? Any veggie, yeah, any canola veg is my preferred. Any veggie oil. Well, I prefer canola. I can't get canola here, so this is a uh, clover Sun oil. Oh, okay. A vegetable oil. So I'm integrating the oil as much as I can. You don't want to overwork it, but you don't want to leave. So you can see it still looks kind of dry. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's probably safe to put the rest of the oil in. All right, so I'm gonna put some more oil in. Not quite a lot. <laughs> One time, Dad threw away my favorite measuring. And you know, it's, it's a fine line between too much oil and not enough. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm more careful because I got a completely different thing to measure with, and it was never the same. It was like <laughs> in that one measuring cup. Yeah, it's still pretty dry. So we'll get the rest in. water is critical. Your, your dough should be kind of crumbly looking, so before you add the ice water. So see how that's kind of crumbly mm -hmm. looking? Okay. So then, like, depending on where you are, the climate, you know, like one tablespoon at a time if I put ice water in. Incorporate it. Do it again. Not quite. Now you don't want it to be so crumbly because you need to be able to form it form into it. a yeah. ball. My 
might be ready. So what I do to check it is I, I get in here and I see, okay, if I try to make a ball out of it, how crumbly is it? It's still a little too crumbly. So we're gonna throw some more water in. Okay. Because when you roll it out, you don't want it to be crumbly. And it's really hard to work with. Right. Usually for a double crust, you could add up to six tablespoons of water or more, depending, like I said, on your climate. So this is going to be for two pies? Yes. Okay. Still too crumbly? Still a little too crumbly. It's really close, but I don't want to battle it between the wax paper being too crumbly. Okay, so I could make a decent loaf out of it. Okay? I have it in Idaho somewhere in the storage unit. I have this mat that measures. It's round and you can use it to help measure. Like different size pie different sizes, yes. pans. But you don't need that. that I never had one for the longest time. Um, I just take the pie plate and measure as I go and make sure that the crust is big enough to go inside the pie plate. Mm -hmm. So you take wax paper. I mean, you notice how I got the surface a little wet because it helps to stop it from sliding around. And then I will take and I'm gonna, the bottom crust needs more crest because you have to go up the sides of the pie plate. So I usually take slightly more than half for the bottom. Okay. Wait, okay, so this is one pie, but you're doing a top crust well, the, on it, right? Yes. Yeah, it, okay. It's called a double crust Double pie. crust, right, okay. So what you wanna do as opposed to like a pumpkin pie, which would be a single crust right, pie. Right, and then you would, the recipe you took a picture of, you would just make the one crust version, but I doubled everything here. Okay, so you try to give it a good start with a circle. Mm -hmm. Cover it with another piece of wax paper. And press it down. Now, in the event you don't have one of these doodads, mm -hmm. and this one's crummy, use a wine bottle. Okay. Okay? In fact, this one's kind of broken. I have to kind of use it like I would use a wine bottle because these things keep falling off. So you have to sort of, you see why you want it wet underneath? So the paper sticks. <laughs> yeah, the paper likes to move. So it takes some gentle moving at first, you know, you can't get too carried away and you want to slowly make your, make your circle even. So just a little gentle pressure, pulling it out. And when you see it starting to separate there, you kind of want to get it to work back together.
Now normally, what I like to do, flip the whole thing over, make sure I'm not wrinkled and crinkled, and work from this side. Kind of, except for this. <laughs> So you can see, maybe it is a little dry. So I'm gonna have to be. So you just kind of have to gingerly. And we're gonna end up trimming like the edges of this when we lay it down in the. Yes. Yeah. See, so the problem today is the wax paper wants to... Yeah, you and your sister are troublemakers. Yes. Patience, a little gentle pressure to get everything. Out and typically the I use a I think it's an eight inch high plate. with the audience. Well, who's the audience besides you? It's the fam. Just the four of us. We've all seen you make a pie, so. You don't need to see my struggles. And the rest of them. I'm putting it up on YouTube for everybody to see. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a YouTube star. We're going to start a YouTube cooking channel. Hi, my name is Debbie. My name is Debra. My name is Sophia. Thank you, Brian. That is helpful. <laughs> it's not moving. So when you wonder if you're close, and I'm pretty sure we're not, you bring the pie plate over. And you stick it on, and oh no, we're not close. How much? I mean, that looks pretty close. Well, remember, it's got to go up the side. Oh, okay. Oil pastry is not as easy to make, and this is an oil pastry, as opposed to most pies are made with a, not liquid vegetable oil, but with um, hard either butter or oil. See, it's not quite big enough. A little bit more to it. Your Aunt Peggy, ironically, has always done the oil pastry too. It, I thought was pretty cool because I've never met anybody else that knew how to do it. Okay, I'm gonna call it done. Okay. So I'm just gently rolling this off. There's no eggs, so you can eat this uh, dough. 
Yeah, get out of my dough. The feet. So the trick here is to gently pick up your dough, lay it over, adjust so you know you've got enough. This, this is your bottom crust, so you've got to have some extra. So I give it like a half a finger length if I, you know, that feels pretty good. And then the trick is peeling it off. So I kind of stretch it, and if it doesn't want to come off very well, then I see how I'm sort of stretching with my this mm -hmm. fingers. Okay, stretch it. Maybe Aunt Peggy also got the recipe from Betty Crocker. Probably. So now I'm gently lifting it up to dropping it inside the plate. Okay. Okay. And if things break, it's easy to repair for the most part. to have as much of my top sort of structured from the bottom piece before I even fill the pie. Stop eating the dough. It's just sitting there. <laughs> if Cammie were here, she'd be fighting you for it. <laughs> well, she's not here. <laughs> but don't eat all of it because I think I'm going to have some thin spots. So keep your grimy fingers off. Grimy. I'm watching, I'm watching you. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I'm gonna need some of these pieces. As you can see like right here, it's kind of thin. So I'm just patching in. Okay. And then I'm it a little so I can use it not so people can eat it there's Cammie's dance when she was the mouse I think this is my favorite number from the nutcracker it's got a lot of brass your fault if my crust doesn't turn out. It's fine. Now see I've kind of got a little break here. So what I would do is I would just stick up. Just do that. Okay. So I'm I, want, just, I want that piece. No, I want that piece when I have the pie. So oh, it's got okay. Extra crust. Well you try to remember where it is. <laughs> okay. die waiting for me to finish this dump. Okay, so we've rolled out the top. We added more water and yeah, then we added a little more ice water, yeah. And it rolled out much easier. Yes. So took mom about two and a half minutes. Whereas I think the first one to roll out probably took, took it forever. It took an eternity. Six or seven minutes, yeah. So I want to make sure that it's at least now we don't have to make it as big as the one on the bottom. So it's perfect. So before I take it off, we have to put the apples. So we've got. Okay, now what went in the apples? Um, cinnamon and sugar? Cinnamon and sugar, and um, that's about it. Do you remember how much it was? Three quarter cup sugar and um, a teaspoon of cinnamon, I believe. Looks like you gotta wait for it to fall asleep. I'll have to give you the recipe later. Okay. But basically, choose your apple pie filling or whatever filling, whether it's peaches or blueberries or... Right. Just usually a fresh fruit pie has like 
cinnamon and sugar, even blueberry pies have the cinnamon and the sugar and the peach pies. Um, this could have had nutmeg in it, but we didn't have any nutmeg, but okay. that's okay. Not everybody likes nutmeg. And it's kind of like, add, it's a roughly and like... So And there's flour with oh, the there's sugar. there's flour with the sugar. That is going to help thicken so that it's not a real runny pie. Right, now, okay. Some people use cornstarch. Sure, I was just about to ask. In fact, we have cornstarch. I could throw some in, but I've already put flour in, so... Okay. Um... How much flour do you remember? Well, two how many? Two tablespoons, three quarters cup sugar, and two tablespoons of flour. Okay, and how many apples? It was about uh, five large Granny Smith and one um, red one that was sweet. Okay. I always add a sweet one. Um, this may be too many apples for this pie, but I never know. So, so anyway, so they're gotten kind of juicy. I sliced them up and. And, uh, and you could take this crust recipe and do like a crumble with these too, right? By doing little balls of dough or... I've never tried that. I guess it'd be extra flaky, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean... Maybe there's... like a butter dough would be better for a crumble or something. Yes. And usually a crumble has um, brown sugar in it too. Right. And there's lots fancier um, pie recipes. This is a basic, basic pie. I'm not gonna see all the juice, Brian. I'm not gonna put too much of the juice in. Okay. Um, because then it will be runny. So. So this will cook down, so it's okay to mound it up a bit, but make sure you don't get it too full. Hey John, would you mind turning the oven on to 400? Man, I gotta do heavy. Yeah, <laughs> yes you do. So. Four hundred. Wash my hands. I'm making a gin gimmel. Oh. Anybody wants one? Be happy. So now you put butter, pats of butter. Maybe a couple tablespoons worth, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't ask me what the butter does, I don't know. Uh, butter makes everything better. Need, but you could use regular butter. Okay. You could use salted butter if you wanted? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. It's a, this is what the Scotty calls for unsalted. Okay, so I'm going to remove the wax paper. Okay, and so I'm going to lay this gently over the top. I'm using my fingers on the underside. Brian, you little thief. You didn't need that part. <coughs> I'm using the same method. It's sort of like pulling the stretching. Uh, no, I didn't end up using it. It should. It's behind. The, it's in with the, the oh, bottles. 
Anyway, so now I'm trying to seal the edges. So, oh, there's a lot of extra here. I might need it. I can't have it. So I try to tuck the one on the top in with the one on the bottom. Now I can see already here when it cooks, it's going to bubble through this crack right here. Okay. But I try really hard not to do that. I was in the Nutcracker, this was my song. Okay, so you see, you kind of need stuff for patching because stuff like that happens. So you, you kind of just go in there and this is very moldable and, but I can tell you right now, there's gonna be a, a vent. Well, you will definitely need to vent. Try to clean it up as best you can, and then all right. So you kind of get these edges clean, and then this was the way my mother did it. I think Cami does it this way to make the edges pretty. It's just a simple twist. Okay. This isn't the most beautiful pie crust in the world, but it'll be tasty. help you at the moment, John. <laughs> it's in there, on the right somewhere. Okay, so I've created the fluted edge and now we have to vent it. Of course, you know me, I always put a letter in the middle of what the pie is. Did you find it? Uh, well, it's a simple syrup. Well, then it's... We have two open bottles of milk. Can you, can you just wait a moment, please? No, I can't. <laughs> drinks to be made. And so I'm just going around and creating more vents so it can bubble and... Also, when I'm testing it to see if it's ready, I usually go through this, one of these vents with a knife, because uh -huh. then I can poke to see if the apples are soft enough yet. Now, some people sprinkle sugar on top of the crust. I generally don't, but I always use one of these guys to cover the crust because it will get burnt faster. Oh, okay. So, um, Do you take it off midway through or? Yeah, I, so the cook's at 400 degrees for 50 minutes. I'll check it at 30 minutes and um, just check in on it. Okay. And then um, if the pie seems really far off, because I start to look for bubbles too, you can hear it, you can hear it cooking. Um, so maybe the last 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes, I might. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're just waiting for the oven to heat. And since these make a mess, I would highly recommend putting a cooking sheet lined with foil underneath catch all the drips. Okay. The end. The end. Okay, the pie is starting to bubble. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. And so, you want to see, and see it's already dripping down a little bit. Down below. Oh, down below, yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to check the crust to make sure. It's pretty brown. I'm going to let it brown for a little bit more. Okay. Um, I haven't checked the firmness or the I got it, Mom. lack of firmness on the uh, uh, apples yet. I'll do that with a knife the next time. Okay. okay. How much? How long has it been in so far? It's been in um, almost 40 minutes. 
So the first timer you set was how long? 30, 30. minutes, and I just wanted to check on it. I didn't see any bubbling yet, but you can see some pretty active bubbling yeah. coming up in those spots that I showed you over there on the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so I gave it a little more time because the, the bubbling wasn't very active, but the bubbling is quite active right now. So after... So you gave it another two minutes? I gave it another eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. Which is going to be up in a minute. It's supposed to take 50 minutes, but it's it's a crapshoot. You never quite know. Okay. Cool. All right, we're ready. We're ready. So um, I took a knife like this and I to test to see if it was ready. And I used one of the slits and poke in there to see. And the, the apples feel not too mushy, but a little bit Soft, firm. But so still a little bit firm. So they're just, just right to come out. And it's oh, you have a rack for it. Yes, so uh, we're not eating this till tomorrow. I hope you know. <laughs> so you put this tray with foil underneath just basically to keep the oven clean. Yeah, otherwise we'd be having to clean the oven. Oh, okay. Because typically fruit pies, they all bubble over. Peach, blueberry, Oh, but I, it on one side. oh no. Great job, Mom. Well done.